The purpose of my channel is to give hope in recovery. And getting to the point where you have hope is really important. What you do after that is just as important. I had a situation happen recently and I felt that it was something that many people can relate to. Maybe not the specifics. So I try to leave out as many specifics so that I don't alienate anybody from being able to relate. But in this situation, I'm not quite sure how I can leave out specifics um, and be able to get the message across of, of um, learning from past mistakes, learning from our part in relationships, uh, without sharing and well here you go <laughs> um, I have been trying to break patterns in relationships because it's really important in order to once we recognize that there is a pattern it's really important to recognize our part in the pattern and that can be really difficult because that that takes a level of humility and um, humiliate humility without judgment now what's interesting about the word humility is um, it's derived from the word humiliation <laughs> so humiliation is a very negative way to see it so what I had to do once I kind of came to this big reveal was to not focus on the humiliation of this um, this past, but to recognize that I am seeking my part because I want to change my future. I want to change how I do things. So I needed to shift over from the humiliation that I was feeling or um, the embarrassment of my lack of um, abilities, essentially, to, um, to an excitement. Just transfer a little bit of the energy that goes into the post-realization into a positive. And so that's what I did. Um, I, and I didn't do it for that reason, I just realized after having a conversation and finding my part in the pattern that in order to transfer that into a positive thing, I had to process it. So here's how that went. In past relationships, um, I had to look at my part in the pattern and um, what I was able to identify was that there was a lack of confidence that I had as far as feeling the ability to ask for what I need in a relationship. There was also um, a lacking of knowing boundaries, knowing how to establish boundaries in a relationship when going into it. How to, obviously, if I wasn't strong in creating boundaries, then enforcing boundaries would be a moot issue, but that's something that would be, you know, that would come up. I looked at how important those two elements were, and I saw how that affected the relationship. If you are in a relationship and the person isn't telling you what they need, then that means they're also not getting what they need. That is detrimental to a relationship because there is a, a feeling of um, dissatisfaction overall in the relationship. And it's not, that has nothing to do with the other person. If the other person doesn't know that you need something and they're not giving it to you, that has nothing to do with them, you being dissatisfied me being dissatisfied in a relationship has nothing to do with the other person if I'm not telling them what I need. 
I recognized that I didn't possess certain um, tools, that certain skills, I suppose, in creating the relationship or in ending a relationship. And this doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. It can be a friendship. When you realize something is not healthy for you and you need to end it, knowing how to end it is something that is, I think, tricky for a lot of people. And for a lot of the same reasons, for me, I don't like hurting other people. And I was also unsure of how to do it in a way that I was... <laughs> I am not going to stop this video. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and mute this. Um, <laughs> I wasn't sure of how to do it. Um, I've recognized that was, was key for me in the relationship. It was an ability to be autonomous, have some element of autonomy. And I talked before about a Venn diagram, you know, how much of an overlap there is with people. You know, it, everybody has their own ideal and not being able to match that up, not being... Uh, compatible in that way really starts off relationships on a bad note. Um, being able to slowly progress into them is is really, I think, the healthiest way to see how much of um, how much interaction with a person, whether it be a friend or a loved one or family, how much of an overlap in your life you want them to have. There's a, a phrase like, you know, family is everything. Um, you know, you never turn your back on family. Uh, you never, whatever, like it just, what is the other one? Um, blood is, is thicker than water, <laughs> you know? Those are just kind of ridiculous statements because you're taking out the all important element of the person it's not about this title, it's about the person. And not everybody is able to fit into our life in a way that is beneficial for both parties. Um, so there's a lot of insecurity in there for me, which, which created my part in the pattern that was created. So, Oh my goodness. So, <laughs> the next part, let me pause. Actually, I'll just cut this part out. <laughs> or maybe I won't cut this out because this is life. You know, things happen in life that you don't expect that mess up your plans that you have this expectation that you realize maybe I shouldn't have an expectation because when we create this expectation, you know, it's like a little gateway to um, feeling disappointment. So without feeling expectation, you know, and just being open to what happens, we can be more at peace in our day to day. So, <laughs> I moved on to what I can do now. Now that I could see my part and recognize, and it doesn't feel good to recognize that there are actions um, that are in your day-to-day -day, um, interactivity with uh, relationships that are based on insecurity. And what I was able to see was because I was only giving a sh small amount of time to kicking myself over it, um, over the re certain relationships failing because of this, I was able to see that I didn't have those skills to begin with. So how can you apply something that you don't know? From there, I went to what can I do? So what can I do? I can uh, first learn what healthy boundaries are and 
decide which boundaries are important to me so that I can protect my autonomy for myself um, and whatever else that I feel that I want to preserve. The second thing I can do, and this again is, is related to me, but it can be applicable to others, is when more is asked of me than I'm able to give, I need to be honest about that. I think that a lot of us want to, to be a positive influence and make other people happy, but we do that to our own detriment. When you're on an airplane and you are about to take off and they go through the safety uh, pamphlet or the video, there is a part where they talk about what happens in, a, in an event of an emergency. And when the airbags drop, you are supposed to put the oxygen mask on yourself before you help the person next to you. There's a really good reason for that. If you don't have oxygen flowing to you, it is only a matter of, of moments before you are incapable of helping anyone ever again. That is the same in life. We have got to recognize that if we don't have the oxygen mask on ourselves, if we don't have um, peace and harmony essentially and on some level, whatever level we need, we aren't going to be able to be that positive influence in other people's lives. Another thing is um, recognize that a relationship is a, is a partnership. Again, that goes with romance, it goes with family, friends. There's a partnership. There's a goal involved. Why are you friends with this person? Why are you in a relationship with this person? You need to be upfront about your expectations and it's real and what you want. I mean, it's not just about what you expect of the other person, but what you want. That is the most important thing to be able to reflect later on and saying, am I getting what I want from this relationship? And if not, how? If I'm not getting it, then maybe this isn't the right, right relationship for me. So I think that that is, those are a start to evaluating how to break a pattern, evaluating situations that happen in our life that we see as a pattern within our life. I am so grateful, despite the fact that, you know, there's still some, a little bit of like sting involved and in seeing this weakness because we don't like to see, and that ultimately, that's not a judgment. I was not strong in certain um, elements of forming a relationship or within a relationship, and that was across the board. I was not strong. I was weak in those things and it doesn't feel good. But recognizing that there were those weaknesses, there are so many tools to help strengthen. And every tool that we not only learn, but we have to apply. These are actions. This is a call to action. When I write these things down, it means that I have every intention of taking steps to do this. What can I do? is very different than what I am going to do. So what I can do is learn about the elements where I was weak in and learn more tools, learn, gain more knowledge, gain wisdom, and apply it next time around in any relationship, in every relationship that I want to be successful. Ending all of that, I needed to wrap it up in this, basically this bow of gratitude because the goal of being able to reflect was so that I could see my part, so that I could see what it is that I contribute to certain events, certain patterns, so that I can change that, so that in the future, I do have healthier and stronger relationships so that I am getting more of what I want out of life that will help make me more content, give me more moments of happiness, less moments of disagreement and 
inner um, inner turmoil those things I am extremely grateful for because that gave me hope for future relationships that gave me hope to see how powerful this information being able to kind of strip away my my defenses and say okay I'm I recognize that I'm not doing everything right um, in every element of my life the desire to do better is powerful that desire of knowing that I can change how I do things to impact my own life and my own happiness is powerful I need to take action from this point reflection is great but without a plan and without implementing a plan there's not much to go from there so I just wanted to share a little bit of what turned out to be a little bit of an outline of how to get over it <laughs> get over um, a relationship even being able to see your part and why a relationship went bad is very powerful because it gives you hope that it can change in the future it gives you hope for more successful relationships and that connectiveness that we have with people it is documented we need people there is such a powerful reaction that we have when we are involved in each other's lives I really hope this is helpful if it is please pass it on um, share whatever you take from it and again as always if you can't relate to every everything that I'm saying just take what you want and leave the rest <laughs>